So I apologize, I have the same hairstyle as the guy before me, but I'll try and say a few different things than he said. Um, I'm delighted to be here. I'm Jared Gruz, I'm the CEO of HuffPost. I also run uh, Oath's news portfolio. You may ask yourself, what is Oath? Oath is a new company owned by Verizon that puts together the assets of Yahoo, AOL, and Verizon Media, and I look after its news and information portfolio. When you put that together, we are the number one digital news organization in the United States. Um, we also have a presence in 16 markets around the world, so I have some perspective on trends that are taking place, not just in North America, Europe, but also Asia, South America, and other parts of the world. I thought today I would share with you um, some reflections on the journey that I've been on over the past three years uh, in this capacity. I think in the digital media landscape, we are clearly sitting at the intersection of four major themes. I will talk to you about each of these themes. The first is the way in which publishers connect with consumers. The second is massive changes in the way in which advertisers or brands connect with media companies. The third is capital. How do people who invest money in these companies think about their investments in digital media? What are they looking for? Um, and uh, where are we? So coming to uh, publishers, how do publishers connect with audiences? Obviously, we've seen massive change in the last 20 years, but an acceleration in the change in the last year. We've gone from a world of traditional media where people watched, um, read newspapers, watched TV, um, had really big computers, now have smaller computers, and of course, the mobile phone is the most important device. As these shifts have happened, the way in which publishers think about connecting with audiences has changed. Um, and what are the insights there? Well, if you think about it, if you're a news publisher, you're really trying to connect on a one-to-one -one basis with somebody who's trying to buy your newspaper. You need to connect with that person. Um, in many respects, if you think about how people form their ideas in the world, it could be from a newspaper. It's more likely not to be from media. It's to be a church um, or in a religious environment or in school. But as we think about the digital environment, now everybody in the world is connected, particularly in their mobile phones. So how they consume information is really, really differently. This has created a lot of work for companies to find content that connects with consumers. We used to have an era in newspapers where you had sections. There was news, sports, finance, entertainment, lifestyle. And as you read the newspaper, you knew exactly what you're looking for. Or if you're watching TV, you turned on a channel to watch sports or to watch news or to watch finance or to watch uh, entertainment programming. In the day of mobile, in the day of social, all of these different content types have converged into being the same thing, and consumers have to do a lot of work to think about what kind of content they're looking at. So if you're thinking about your Snapchat feeds or your Facebook feeds, Facebook doesn't tell you whether the content is news, whether the content's humor, whether the content's entertainment, whether the content's lifestyle. They just have a stream of content that's curated by your social connections. For those of us in this audience who are highly educated and highly intelligent, you can differentiate between what is news and potentially what is fake, fake news. You can differentiate between what is news and what is entertainment or what's a picture of your um, daughter's dog um, and a commercial for a dog. But the younger generation actually has never grown up in an era where content has been segregated by content type. It's actually only discovered through streams, and that creates a lot of work for consumers to figure out um, what it is that they're looking for, which is why I like this picture. So who wins in this digital landscape? Well, I mentioned a trend that all of you are familiar with, the trend from traditional to digital, and within that from computers to mobile phones. But the way I think about it, there's actually been three major eras in terms of how publishers win. And these are not rocket science, but I thought I'd be very explicit about it. The first era is search. Which companies actually know how to create content that Google's algorithms will crawl and index and surface? In that era, there was a lot of great companies that were born. Obviously, with Facebook and the social party happening, a new generation of content companies was created where content companies said, how can I create content that would be consumed in my social feed? Um, those days are actually transitioning as Facebook shifts uh, its algorithms. And now, 
companies are thinking about data. What data do I know about my own consumers? How do I look at this data, and what content can I create for this consumer? So who's going to be the king in this world? Well, things have actually come full circle. And now if you're a content brand or if you're a news brand, the most important word in what I'm talking about is brand. You actually have to stand for something. Gone are the days where you could build a media company that just got scale on YouTube, just got scale on Snapchat, just got scale on Facebook, and think that's going to be sufficient to have a long-term sustainable business because you've got scale of audience. You need to have a brand that stands for something, that means something. So when you look at it, you go, aha, I know what this thing is, and I like this thing, and I'm attracted to this thing. Um, so what that means is if you want to have a media business in today's world, your brand matters. And you need to have your brand stand out from the crowd. If you think about changing in the marketing landscape, it has always been the case that advertisers want to get their ad in front of as many people as possible. This is true in everyday world. If you're walking down the street in Times Square in New York, where I live, um, or digitally, where you have a website and you put ads. And the goal of websites is to get as many people as possible to the website so as many people as possible could see these display ads. This business model, which has been the lifeblood of digital media companies, has been disrupted. The reason why it's been disrupted is three things. One reason is that there is now highly efficient automated advertising markets where buyers and sellers for ads compete in real time um, for placement of ads. And so advertisers no longer go to a company like mine have posts and say, hey, can I go buy those ad slots on your page? They can find access to the inventory on markets. The second is targeting. Um, advertisers have much greater tools to target audiences who they specifically want. If your brand is generic and you have a generic audience, then it's very hard to compete. If your brand matters and uh, has a very specific audience, that can be very valuable to uh, a, a, an advertiser because they can target your audience. But one challenge is even if your brand matters and even if your brand has a highly specific audience, you're going up against companies such as Facebook, such as Google, such as Snapchat that has such a scale of data advantage over you that advertisers are seeking that data. And so when you think about um, the challenges presented by the scale of the platforms compared to smaller publishers, what you're beginning to see happening around the world is digital publishers are either dying um, um, or saying, hey, maybe scale isn't the play that I want. What I really want to do is focus on owning a much stronger core audience by building my brand and thinking about other business models that don't just rely on display ads um, or branded ads or ads at all, but rather there's a huge initiative of moving from ads to memberships or subscriptions. Um, if you think about capital, the third major trend in terms of how investors think about the space, um, there's obviously a few different kinds of investors. There's venture capitalists who are looking out in the horizon. For the last 10 years, venture capitalists looking into digital media had the following mindset. Hey, I'm going to invest in your company. Your company needs to build as big an audience as possible. If you make money on this or not, I don't care yet, as long as you can go attract a huge audience. If you do, great. And there's been, in every country um, in the world, uh, companies that have been heavily capitalized to go do this. Um, and the second kind of capital are subsidiaries of bigger companies. So many media companies, telecom companies, uh, platform companies such as Amazon, Netflix, um, have media brands that are subsidiaries of their bigger company. They have corporate goals. Generally, those media companies, their goal is not to scale the audience as much as possible. Their, their mode is to scale an audience so long as it's profitable. As a general rule, that's how subsidiaries of companies think. Obviously, there's big publicly traded media companies. They have tremendous pressure because they are going up against the scale of platforms. But regardless of whether your media company is venture-backed, whether it's a subsidiary of a bigger company, or itself is a publicly traded media company, we are now at the time where we're at the witching hour, where investors have grown impatient, and they want to receive returns on their invested capital. 
How are they going to get returns on invested capital? This is a challenge for all media companies because of the disruption in terms of audiences and monetization. What we will see happen in the media space, as I mentioned, is many companies dying. Um, a lot of consolidation in the space is beginning to occur. Um, or a few brands that have created a product like this train set that I used to have when I was a kid that people love so much that they're willing to continue to buy. In the United States, for example, we see while many media companies struggle, we see companies like the New York Times excel because they've created a product that people want to seek out and buy. Um, and so we'll see that. In the end, your brand matters. Building an audience that trusts, depends, and relies on you is the most important thing. And as you listen today to a lot of media companies talk very sophisticatedly about jargon words, in the end, I think the equation is quite simple. Do you create a brand that people connect to and seek out? If so, you've got a chance. And if not, regardless of any of the acronyms that you hear throughout the day, I think you do not. Thank you very much.